idea what the bike kitchen is at the moment. Science is it. always chaotic. We're always trying to find something, doing something, and we do a whole lot of stuff. And it always works somehow. Always. <laughs> no, it always works. Yeah. We never had that it didn't work, but it's always stress. And that's the bike kitchen. It's a little bit chaotic and and it's cool and it's fun. So we will try to you see a picture by the way? That was really at the beginning from from bike kitchen. And it's not in the bike kitchen. Huh? I <laughs> guess you know do you see it? It's okay. Um it's not in the bike kitchen as you see, but it was a picture taken at the critical mass. In March 2008, I haven't been there, I was not an active member then. And um, actually a lot of us go in the critical mass, we are not the critical mass. A lot of us, as you saw, are involved in different bicycle projects in Vienna and also engaged in bike kitchen. And we are a lot, you mean it's a little city and we are a lot. You know, do you get what I wanted to say? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. So, Next? yeah, I would say. Okay. What we wanted to do today is to give uh, you an idea what the bike kitchen is. And further on, we will call it BK, or Witten BK, and maybe call it bike kitchen. We will try somehow to give a picture of who we are, what we do, and how we organize ourselves. Because we think maybe you don't know what this kind of concept is. We, we live here and how we live it. We know that not all cities have that. And we think it's important. We will talk about the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, we thought about showing, we, uh, there is a movie about bike kitchen mm, that has been to different film, bike film festivals. It's a great movie, but since you knew or she will come. <laughs> and there is a great movie about the cycle camp. It's one of our new projects, really cool. We thought you want to see or she on the top back. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to hear our gardener, good one, telling us how bike can spread over the world. And we wish, obviously, that there will be more bike kitchens everywhere, so we show you the cycle camp movie. If you want, we can also see the bike kitchen movie afterwards. So it depends on you. <laughs> and I put some. And I, as I always say, if you want beer, we have beer. You have not other alcoholic beer and other drinks. Uh, take your coffee. And if you are cold, we also have a heater. You can put it on. <laughs> or you can put it on. <laughs> you just be better. Cool. So, I don't remember. So, um... I don't want to read this now, it's taken from our, bank, from our homepage. The bike kitchen is here, it's in a district from um, Vienna that we've chosen. We are not a square, like it's common in, in a lot of city or countries that Chico Ficine, for example, are in squats. We they went here. Mm -hmm. so, it was a moment I was not involved, put on a Fakoda were there. We pay 400 euros from about okay. per month. And uh, there was a moment um, that there was a critical mass, there were a lot of people interested in that, who thought, okay, let's try it. They found this place. And I think the place was chosen also because it's central, it's in a neighborhood we like, it's a really mixed neighborhood. Yeah, and we are our legal base. This is a Verein, a club, it's an association. You know, we something like that. Can you say that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's because we need a le we need it or we need a legal base. But we understand ourselves as a non hierarchical and everybody who is involved in a non hierarchical project knows also how difficult it is to try to be a non hierarchical um project, but we understand us of that and it's important for us. We are open collective, we open meaning we are open to everybody who understands himself in a certain limit of things. I mean we want to be open to everybody to come in, 
to be the best bicycle. The only few things you can never do here that's um, resistance mm -hmm. we don't tolerate, um, aggressive, and any kind of aggressive behavior. Um, also against women, we are really aware about the women issue on the Westerners is most and um, obviously if you come in completely drunk and you destroy everything we, or you steal stuff, uh, you get kicked out. Uh, we talk to you that it's not like that and you after that... You try to pick up the people. Hmm? You try to pick up the people. So yeah. that's not our border. Mm -hmm. So if somebody crosses this border, we try to communicate. Yeah. First is communication, it's the first issue. And we don't want to, we, we really want to be an open place. We don't want to be people only looking a certain way coming in or being a certain age. Or we want everybody. And, and, and our experience is a good one. We manage this. That people come in, sometimes it's a little bit like the kiddies. We have a lot of kiddies in summer times hanging around. And at a certain moment they stole something. We talk with them. Stole again. Talk it again. And for them it's really difficult to understand um, we don't we don't take money if you don't have no money clean up or yeah. you know for us it's not you don't have to give us money you can come and say I have no money then it's okay for us mm, for the kids then we say okay if you want to have this cool new bike <laughs> maybe you try to to um, you to put to in order something. to give something back and, it doesn't, and for the kiddies, for example, since they're really into this, for everybody it's difficult, but for them especially because they're like, are you witch? They will tell us that. Are you witch? Why do you do that? They grew up in, in, in Vienna and the Turkish young guys and they are teached in money and they come here and we say there is no price behind. Give what you think what's behind if you want this and they start thinking on the first day they coming in and, and say I give 10 cents for, uh, for a drink and after one, two, three months they coming in and say okay I help you in this corner to clean up this but I want to have this break level. Mm. So pick up the people that things are have a, a price behind, but not the money behind. Yeah, and that's very very interesting uh, because it it running the same system with the young people and also with the grandfathers in the mm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Say the grandfather is coming in the same way and say it's really for free. And they say oh, no that's not for free. We are open space and you explain this. And then they say I have there a lamp picked up in the trash. Can you use it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so give things yeah, they give it a lot of feet. A lot of neighborhood it's like where the seats I was always complaining about because somebody brings us a lot of seats lately. So I don't think it's because people want to give us back. We we are really aware that people around are not scared about us. We try to difference ourselves also from other I think link left um, alternative concepts that we want to be open. We want to be people to be scared about us. We don't we want that everybody can come in here. We about to have a background in the last scene. I didn't have here, honestly. And uh, it works most of the time. It, it works, you know. I, I think it's important. We don't care how you look like. We don't. We care that you are here. And if you're here, we are not serving you. If there's something to do, help us. You know. When I'm doing it here, I say, please take the beer because I'm looking for something else. And that's new, and it works. And that's the amazing thing when I go to buy a kitchen. It works. And we will start to talk about the past. Good one. Okay. Well, actually, it's not about the past, but some more things about ah, yeah. what we, what we ah, are. <laughs> so, um, you see on this picture um, the bike kitchen before we changed a lot of things. 
so where most of you are sitting now, there used to be the bar. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, well, we felt the need to, and, and constantly <coughs> feel the need to reorganize and uh, restructure things. And um, we also, we have the problem of limited space. You have seen the book before. <coughs> well, of course we would like to have a place as big as the book, but we don't. No, and bigger. Huh? <laughs> bigger. Bigger. <laughs> Even bigger. A whole factory hall or whatever. But, but at the moment we no, have, this is the place we have and it's limited. <laughs> and therefore um, we constantly uh, uh, restructuring, reorganizing things, trying to improve. And it's also, uh, it's a big challenge, a struggle between place for repairing bikes and the place for socializing and party. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, huh? It's always a fight. Yeah, it's a, it's a struggle. The workshop and space uh, and, and the social space fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's growing more in this and yeah. more in this <laughs> same direction. In same but in Budapest. <laughs> we have a place where it's possible mm. that we can organize this fight. Yeah. And that's very great. And it's very great, and for example, this beam thing, we, we just, that's also new, you know, we always, it's a fluctuating thing, we always develop, we are 30 to 40 people involved, and sometimes more, sometimes less, and sometimes you just come by and nobody's here, and you reorganize something, and then the next time to somebody else tries to find that, but you just reorganized, and so you never find something, but it's okay, it's, you have to come along with that. It's and the beamer, we put it also for, for separation sometimes, when we want to to stop, you know, when we want to... Because I also want to say it's not only the party people and the mechanics fighting, it's also like culture, cultural, political ushers are really important to us, art stuff, and it's also difficult to find the time in all of that. So Connor wanted to... But you see on this picture, the wood found themselves to heat the room. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now the heater is on the same place. Oh, yeah, yeah. The heater is also a big it's discussion. It's organizing <laughs> by themselves how we do things and we, we look at this, how it runs and it works or it doesn't work and then we talk about if we try to change and then we change. And sometimes we get pissed off because nothing works and we talk too much. And we want to be more organized, especially for Kone and me. Sometimes I, I'm like, hey, it's, I want to fix the thing. When do we do it finally? But let's keep on on yeah. to, 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 to the presentation. So, so what, we, what, we are, what you also see is that the bike kitchen is not only a, a, place, uh, a workshop to repair bikes. Uh, it is a place to repair bikes. And in the back, we also have another room for the metal workshop things, like a welding machine and flex and so on. Uh, but we also, the bike kitchen is also a kitchen, it's a bar, it's a living room, it's many things. And it's, uh, it's also a place for learning. And what is important for us is that we see it as a place for self-determined learning and for knowledge sharing. Uh, that means that you know something and uh, someone else asks you and then you explain it and then the other person knows and maybe can also then uh, share the knowledge with someone else and um, so we try to also to be open and non-hierarchical in that sense and the main, the main reason why we do it is that we see this big goal of uh, self-empowerment and um, yeah and it's all embedded in the do-it-yourself DIY culture. So maybe maybe some of you have been here on Thursday. Uh, we even had a DIY tattoo session. Yeah. On no, Thursday. you already had it. Yeah. <laughs> so so we take DIY very seriously and mm. try to do a lot of things on <laughs> on our own oh. with different success, but. But it is a place where you can try things out. I mean, where else can you, can you, if you have no idea about welding, where else can you go to try welding? I mean, I learned welding in the bike kitchen. I'm not perfect, I'm not really good, it looks shitty, but things work and I can do it and I can learn it here. 
That that's the idea. And for me, and the you have one more talk yeah. like me. <laughs> but let me quickly speak. Um, for me, the concept of self empowerment. I, I don't know if to everybody of you is common the concept of self empowerment. Uh, otherwise, ask if something is not clear or some language issues or some. Please ask. We can manage. Self empowerment to us is really important. And for me, personally, I think it's this being able to understand your bike, you know, or just to feel, hey, I can do it by myself. I mean, I'm somebody who learned it here. That's my first bike. I built it by myself. Before I saw that, the person said, I can do it. It takes too much time if you're doing it. I was doing before, yeah. I was doing that, but I never did something by myself. I built it my bike by myself. And everybody, every person who passes and tells me, hey, can I do that? I say, let's try. It's not so difficult. Hey, I did it. <laughs> and I do things wrong all the time. And sometimes I have a flat tire and I have problems to fix it. And good don't say to me, too, it happens to me, too. And that's self empowerment for me. To be able to understand, to not be dependent on shops, on the people, tell you, on the mechanic, but to know I can manage in a certain way under a certain problem. Okay, let's go on. Five. Five to last one, Okay. The bike kitchen. As you, as you may have seen outside, uh, the bike kitchen is also a place to build special constructions. With special constructions we mean things like, uh, like this chopper on the right <laughs> side, uh, tall bikes of different sizes with different frame constructions, uh, but also I would say maybe more, more practical special constructions like this kitchen bike. Uh, this was built here in the bike kitchen by by this guy who was standing there, and he used it, for example, during the bicycle film festival to make food for the people and and sell the food on donation basis. Yeah. And um, people always ask us, why why do you do that? Why why do you why have so strange bikes? You know, why do we ride tall bikes? I mean, cargo bikes, okay, it makes sense. It's practical. And um, I think we do it because it's part, for me, it's before I was discussing with one of you about art, I think it's a kind of living and activism art movement, who was born in Vienna, together with states, obviously. And then the other thing is for us to show around the urban bike culture, to show, hey, yeah, bicycle is ecological, it's practical, it keeps you fit, but it's fun. And the bicycle don't have to look the way it has to look. It's a way to give, have fun, to give attention to this kind of construction or, I don't get the word, but I think you know what I mean. And I think it's when people see us in our tall bikes, especially a lot of people of us is around, they look, at, I, I was at the part of ones with five guys on the tall bike and everybody was turning around. And I think it's like magic that helps the bicycle movement that we all want. It's not only about being cool, it's about art, a way, artistic way to live by culture and giving a certain attention. Yeah, that's and, it, and it's really it's incredible. If you go with a tall bike, you just make people smile. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's wonderful. I can testify that, <laughs> based on experience in Budapest. <laughs> yeah. I'm not very much. Okay, um, yeah, also what we do with the tall bikes and with other bikes and special constructions is we do bike games. <laughs> bike games is a very important uh, part of the bike kitchen. Uh, and it's also about, about having fun, but it's also, as Julia said before, a form of uh, of uh, showing what what bike culture can look like, it's a form of, of, of urban actionism. It's an it's an expression of, of, of art and of living a, a bike culture. And uh, so maybe I can say some words about these pictures. On the on the left side, uh, on the upper picture is um, we uh, we had a, we used to have a summer party uh, at the Danube. We will have it this year again and uh, we built uh, surf bikes. <coughs> so you have a, a single surf bike on the left and you have a 
a double tollway which doesn't exist anymore unfortunately because of the uh, space problem. I no, know. It. It <laughs> no. Because I you could wire it with, with music and then go you could wire to the Danube. Yeah, you could on bike the street and then and then enter the water. And then you could yeah. also go on the critical mass and not put the surf bike, but you could put uh, a put sound, system. sound system on it for the critical mass. It was a great bag. You broke it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's well, okay. It was yeah, really but you have the neighbors are complaining. It was outside in the back and then the neighbors Last were complaining. Then people from the from the yeah. city were complaining about bikes on the street. We had no place inside, <coughs> so I, I I cut it. <laughs> I destroyed it. But now we have we have uh, maybe the motivation to do something new. That's yeah, also good. <laughs> and then um, on the upper right side you see a bike game called uh, Tall Bike Jousting. It is um, it reminds you of uh, the jousting what the knights did, you know, with, with on horses and with swords. And we do that on tall bikes with these sticks. You see it behind the sofa. You see the sticks with the bridge? <laughs> you know, some plastic cubes with some with some um <laughs> with <laughs> the foam or foam around. And so people two people ride against each other. And then they, the, the, the goal is to so push uh, the other person off the bike. You know, it's not such a, I mean, people that hurt. <laughs> we had people like brought to the hospital. <laughs> but, but normally it's not, it's not too dangerous. <laughs> but that's a normal situation riding a bicycle in the city. Or yeah, you could also do it. We get it all the time, yeah. <laughs> and we were helmets. Yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> in this case. And then, and then um, on, the, on the lower left side, uh, that would be me on the picture. Uh, this is another bike game called Bike Bungee. And I think we invented it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's Bike Bungee. Yeah. Yeah. And it works, it works <coughs> the way that uh, we, make, we make a belt kind of out of tubes, out of broken bike tubes and then connect the bike tubes to some stable plate and then you have a BMX bike like these that are hanging above you uh, without brakes and you, you cycle <coughs> and you have to reach a certain <coughs> point where you usually have a glass or something with, with uh, uh, vodka. Uh, not vodka but something <laughs> something to well, it vodka things like that and so you have to reach it and by the time you grab it and you stop cycling that it pushes you. <coughs> that I mean, this is a game without winners and losers. That uh, yeah. everybody wins. It is a game with injured people. <laughs> not too much. No, my <laughs> budget <laughs> not. So my budget not so dangerous. And then on the right side, you see the first version of our rodeo bike, uh, which m some of you have seen and tried out on Thursday here in mm -hmm. the bike kitchen. So you basically you cycle and you move <coughs> around yourself. It just turns yeah. around. That's the and only bike in the bike kitchen where I cannot get home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, Georgie, the guy who was here before, he built it, and his idea was that you that you turn around so fast that it makes you puke. <coughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and give the. <coughs> other spec what you feel. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't get into that subject too much. But um, I must also say that not all of that, that you, the one of you into bike movements know that this bike games is a little bit part of the bike punk movement, it was born especially in the States. We don't understand us only in that. Surely it's also part of the having, spa having fun in public spaces and without paying too much, also also the DIY, you don't need to go and buy so much. You just can take your friends and have fun together by doing something yourself. Okay. A very important thing on the collect uh, on 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 the bike game stuff is that we do it in a collective. That we that do we it do it together. Mm. We build this stuff. We have the ideas together, and we communicate this together, and we grow up this together. Yeah, another thing that we regularly do uh, at the moment, not so much anymore, um, it is bike moves. So 
when when someone some of our friends or if we if we move from one place to another within the city then we organize a lot of people that come with trailers and cargo bikes and on that day it was a uh, and me moving from one place to another and to the place we moved Alec used to live before and then we moved Alec to <coughs> a new place so we had two bike moves at the same and one on the in the morning time. before and one in the morning years. even before I was not in Vienna <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but as Alex said before, uh, during the tour, um, out of the some a little bit out of the bike kitchen also, uh, the cargo bike collective, the Lastenrad collective, uh, was established. This is a collective um, which um, works in a way that people own cargo bikes or trailers, but of course you don't need them every day. You need them for special occasions. So they stand around for a lot of time, and then they they have a map on the internet where you see which cargo bike is located where in Vienna, and you can borrow it and uh, pay uh, a little price. It's also based on donations, and that's how people can easily get cargo bikes and do bike moves on their own. Yeah. The cargo bike collective wasn't grown up in the bike kitchen. But the people are, uh, who are socializing in the bike kitchen come together. And so you have a, a lot of socializing stuff in, in the bike kitchen and in the bike scene in Vienna. And stuff like uh, the Cargo Bike Collective grows up of this. There grow, grow up ideas how, how you can improve the city. Okay. Yeah, I can do it if you want. Um, yeah. Besides, I want the picture. I want to do it. Yeah, okay. Um, we are not, um, and it's also why I want to talk, it's also something I, it's important to me. It's not only a bike kitchen, but it's a collective partaking, not only a bike related event, something I really care about, but it's also, so, and we go out, we were in a super easy fair, we were, we were always in, in the bike film festival, we make a program beside also because it's important us to show that there's also another kind of bike movement, DIY. DIY. DIY, I never get it. And we make bike blocks in, in things that are really political issues that are important to us, or kind of part of us. We participate. We go on demos so important, we support squads and a project that is important to me is DEF thirteen, it's a project born in Vienna for homeless people, it's not a political issue, it comes from homeless people and all around in the city on the every Friday 13th, also other cities have that. There are um, little events by independent projects, um, independent groups for making aware of the situation of persons living in, in difficult homeless situations. So we try to go out with our bikes, always by identifying ourselves um, with the bike kitchen, if we do it as bike kitchen. So obviously we do also things outside of the bike kitchen, we don't live only bike kitchen. But that we do that as bike kitchen and really think about. To the picture, um, the first one. Should I say something about the pictures and I put them? Yeah. Okay, so on the, on the upper left is a picture of the subversive fair. This was an... Um, action or, a, or an event uh, in Linz, when Linz was capital of culture. This was three years ago and they invited us and we came at Bike Kitchen and we had a workshop there together with the, in that time, um, yeah, the, the, the born Bike Kitchen Linz. <laughs> it actually started around that time and so we did bike polo and we built some constructions and so on and um, yeah, supporting that that event on the on the upper right. This is um, two years ago bicycle film festival in Vienna. Uh, you see the bike outside. It's a Puro bike, and uh, so we put fireworks on the bike and then moved around with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, on the lower left, this was the <coughs> non-competitive alley cat of the EKH, which is a squad in Vienna. And uh, on the picture you see one station 
where we did shitty bike throw. Yeah. So we built 50 <laughs> kilograms shitty bike throw. And we call them, we, we built them a year ago and we called them shitty bikes because they were almost unrideable to ride. Yeah. yeah. And on the right side, this is uh, the Chiamona, the big critical mass in Rome, where some of us went last year and some of, the, of us will go this year again. Okay. And uh, last but not least, I only, uh, I mean, this is also something we do, upcycling and bike art. And uh, what I want to mention here is uh, especially Reza, who is here today. Um, she is very much involved in, in upcycling and bike art. And she also makes workshops at the bike kitchen and, in, and at other places. And the idea behind it is that we use bike parts to make jewelry, to make sex toys, and uh, yeah, different things also as a part of uh, yeah, the urban bike culture. And also we use a lot of stuff that got us thrown away here. I mean, when I go to Gudun and Fahrt, I see, oh, it's interesting but how you build it, your paper stander out of bike parts, because I just did it different than you. So we say that all of the stuff is thrown away here, and since we are always here, we use it to put them in our apartment. and give them a proper way, and yeah. it works, they have great, great furniture. We make things to like furniture, to hang up things, doormats out of old bike tubes, or not, not bike tubes, but the tires, and belts, uh, and jewelry, and a lot of things. I can uh, be open. I, I, have, I have some um, flyers from Reza's project, maybe if you're interested you can, you can take some also go, can go to your place if you're interested and make a workshop there, right? Yeah, not, a, not only me, but also Alex. Yeah, and Alex, who was there before. Yeah. Let me come back. But by the way, yeah. it, makes the, it makes it really difficult to clean up the workshop, the, the, <laughs> the, the area, no, and well. find the space, because <laughs> everybody's saying is to everything Maybe we can use it. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> to clean up and find space and 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 give their a frame for this. It's very very difficult. You guys should never speak to my wife. <laughs> 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 oh, we're only in the past. We have to get a little bit farther. Yeah, maybe. And we started half a year ago. Four and a half years ago. Oh. Actually, none of us who was here was involved in the very beginning. Hey, uh, there was a group uh, that uh, that organized or that met a few times. It's kind of it came out of critical mass, and they had this idea to form a bike kitchen and started to organize and about four years ago um, the location here was found we started to have some tools already we started to 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 uh, start to we started to run this place and um, yeah four years ago we had the opening party and Falk and me we joined the bike kitchen at that time and um, you wanna go Can on? Do, yeah. yeah I, I started two years ago but it isn't really important in the bike kitchen. We are about 30 people, more or less active. More or less, we are 30 people and more or less active. It's not everybody of us always so active. Well, we don't live from that. We are volunteers. We get no money out of it. Some are students, some working. We have different backgrounds, different life, ages, different positions. Um, some are more focused on technical, we also said this dispute about the party and political stuff, so some are more focused on technical things, bicycles, bike pores, some are more in special constructors, some are more into socializing, some are more into political issues, and you forgot the cultural issues, so important to me. And we are women and men, we have surely an awareness that as it is a technical thing we are in, that sometimes it's more, it's important how to bring in women, how to encourage women, so we are really aware of this thing, as we try 
also not always successfully. All the things we are trying, we cannot say that we are all always successful. We try to introduce not racistic, plural English, so we have our difficulties in it. I must have also with the women. I never miss that we have some troubles, but we're still trying. But at the end of the day, today you saw the cows and three women put it on the beamer and the technical, and yeah, that's by kitchen too. And for us, it's by kitchen too to say, to learn, to me, to learn to repair my bike, because I learned it here. I can do that. And it's also to teach men, hey, let's do the beamer. They can do that. Don't take out the tool of her hand. Explain it. And um, we are really diverse and the heterogeneous group. We are really different kind of persons. And, the, and that's the important thing, you know, it's really easy to join the bike kitchen because it's around the bike. It's about anything else. It's the first thing I want to bike. You love your bike? Cool. If you come here with the car, it's okay, but yeah, don't put it too close because you need to buy a race for your bike. So, <laughs> yeah, it's okay, but uh, we will talk about you if you don't want to buy a bike. <laughs> But we all improved our social connection, we all improved our knowledge, mm. yeah? And the, the stuff under, under, under the line is bicycles. How, how can you connect it over the line, yeah? And that's our way we live this here in the Vienna Bike Kitchen. <laughs> I go on with uh, some organizational issues mm. and how it works. So the vacation is open only once per week officially. This is on Thursday. Uh, the, we have the workshop from 4 to 8 and then from 8 till midnight we have the we call the Korea bar. So we have we usually cook or if someone feels like cooking then there will be food. Uh, which is also based on donation, as you've seen before when we had food, and, uh, and drinks, as you already noticed. And um, once per month, uh, every first Friday of the month, we're additionally open only for women, lesbians, and transgender people. This is a project that started, I think, um, about two years ago, because we felt the need um, to have a to have a special program pro uh, project to uh, encourage uh, more more women lesbian and transgender people in the bike kitchen and it was the idea that they they come here and we have a nice time together and then maybe it's also because sometimes it's a little bit hard if you come to a male dominated uh, workshop and when they already know the bike kitchen, that maybe it's an easier approach to the to the bike kitchen. I, I must say that I'm, I would also really support if we would have a, a man um, a man workshop. Only that the man at the moment didn't express the need because I'm, I'm I'm something I'm aware and I always try to mention, but we don't get to it as we don't get to a lot of stuff and a lot of men, so I cannot do it. But I think it must be really difficult also for men with no technical knowledge to come into the bike kitchen and want it to learn, like my brothers, I mean, I'm not the only one in my family who is learning things here. They, if they come here and would want to change a tire, they cannot do it. They call me by phone and ask me, you know, so they are men like that, like they are women, so I would really support if there would be also a men workshop where men can be honest and say, hey, how does it work? I can't. They think also for many things, so we are aware of that, but the men never had the need to put it up. So. And that's the thing, you know, it's, I cannot put it as a man, <laughs> but it's just my personal opinion, it does not be anybody. And uh, besides these regular open days, we, once in a while we have certain special workshops. We used to have uh, workshops on bike repair, we have uh, upcycling workshops and uh, special projects. Maybe we can come to that later when we talk about the future. Mm -hmm. And also... Uh, sometimes movie screenings, lectures, and of course, party. <laughs> this is an important part of the bike kitchen. I don't know cultures too. I go on this organization. <laughs> party is culture. Yeah, come on. 
Okay. Lectures is culture. Yeah. Movie Up training. Upcycling is culture. So, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I go on this organization. As you know, Tim, we, I, we take conscientious decisions. And we all have a different view of it, and we all have our opinions on things, and yeah. How does we do that? Upside that we have this planner where the persons who are here from us take the decisions. So the present person take decisions. We have an email list and a wiki for the email list we have now it's pretty active. I think it gets forty emails per day at the moment. Um, I have a separate account because otherwise I would not be able to focus. We are autonomous. So completely independent of any political stuff. We are self governed Governed? thanks. Non hierarchical collective, or what we try to be. Hmm? Really important for us is that we are not dependent on the political stuff. Just because we want to to be independent and so can have our opinions in a certain way. We, we, we think it's really important that everybody of us carries personal responsibility in this place, visitor or active members. We do it as a volunteer work. We do internal workshops. What did you mean by that? Like, uh, like, like, plena, Com like plena workshop. workshop when we when we meet and not talk about organizational issues but reflect. Mm -hmm. upon what is going on in the back kitchen. Like for example, we also had uh, a communication workshop um, to improve in that sense. And um, yeah, and but the important for our organization is that we, we are spending time together and we have fun together. It's like for me the difference from the back kitchen mm -hmm. to where I work is that here we are somehow, not all, it's not that you are with everybody, we are a lot of people, you know, but you have a friendly approach to each other, we spend time together, we have fun together, and we put something up together. And I think it's a, a really key point for the back kitchen. Um, but going one step back, um, we spend money that we get the moderation from outside who help help us together to found what is the bike kitchen at the moment. Yeah? So it's not only the fun and the stuff we do and running by themselves. So we try to have also a thinking about what we are doing, okay, but could somebody help us yeah, and reflect this? And we also spend money for this, and that's a very important point for our organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we're getting to the end slowly. Yeah. <laughs> you have no if you need beer in between, you can come here. <laughs> Don't take it too serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alternative economy. It's important to us. We have this really provocative uh, manifesto in German. Um, for us, it means we have no. We try to live in another world. We have no fixed prices. We need to pay our rent. Surely, electric tools and a lot of tools disappear, drinks, etc. We get donations. We always said that money, think, active participation. We try to get food, buy some bike but for free, uh, and we. Try to reuse or recycle bags and bike parts. I think we did already said that. I don't think. Are there any questions? Because I think we keep on repeating these things. Do you want to know something so we can go on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Political things we also said quite quite a lot about. We talked about education and empowerment, the DIY culture, uh, and. Our, our legal basis, as we said, is this Verein, this uh, association, and we call this uh, uh, Association for Supporting Urban Bike Culture. And by that we also mean supporting bicycling in general. 
as a way uh, of ecological transport. I mean, but I don't have to tell you, you all know that, you know, pedal power instead of petrol power. And um, yeah, the open space idea we talked about, uh, uh, certain, I mean, we try to be open, but we have certain ideals, <coughs> and certain issues that are important for us. And uh, this is uh, that we want to be uh, non-discriminating, <coughs> anti-sexist, anti-racist, non-hierarchical, self-governed and autonomous. <coughs> and support and connect to other initiatives and uh, maybe this also goes on for the, uh, to like, um, uh, for the movie we will see later about the cycle camp. So I will come to that later. And um, I can do it if you want. Um, I can do it. Mm. The, fu the future, so we, we don't want to say here play kitchen is great and we never have problems and it's not difficult and stuff, you know. We had some troubles and we always have troubles, we had some more serious troubles in, 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 in winter. We noticed it that a lot of people didn't come anymore. A lot of us were not so involved anymore. <coughs> that we were stressed out, we, didn't, we had some quick crisis meetings and we said, okay, we make a winter enclosure for us, a period where we try to focus on us, because we are overwhelmed here, we, we get uh, questions not from you, but from media, everybody wants an interview from us all the time, 50 people come here to work in, in the working space and we could not manage anymore, you know. So we did a vitamin quite enclosure, 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 and um, we started dish different working groups. The, um, they were mainly the Aki manifesto, the working group manifesto. We tried to, you know, we talked a lot about knowing ethical feminism, anti-racist, but um, a lot of us had need to say, hey, what do you mean? What do we mean by that? What's behind that? So we made this working group, namely Manifesto for the Bike Kitchen, um, Anti-Sexism and Pro-Feminism, we have not decided for the name yet, and Cleaning and Reorganized the Bike Kitchen. With different success, we must say. We must say <laughs> the point at the moment is the cleaning we doesn't challenge. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the result at the moment is, the, just for an example, the result at the moment is the following. A gay manifesto did a really highly artistic and intellectual manifesto, but didn't go to the plenum. And a lot of people still found it not pragmatic enough, so it's like not clear what it happened. A gay pro-feminist, not anti fixism couldn't yet decide for a name. <laughs> and um, it's still fighting about the name, but I still have hope that we find a solution. And um, we reorganized the bike kitchen. Um, we have some new chairs now, and we have again a lot of stuff there. So, yeah, it's, you know. But it, it, it was a good enclosure for us, I must say. And it's, work, yeah, we it's work in progress. It's you know, it doesn't stop. No, but it was good because it was good that we closed. When we decided for the enclosure, we had no emails on the list anymore. We had nearly nobody of us hanging around anymore. And now we have a really active list. We had good working, everybody, more people hanging around again, so it was good for us. And the way it is looking forward, it's the way we are, and it's okay. We must say that we have a lot of money. We wanted to say that. Um, we don't know. What not that we don't can donate. Do with this money. The <laughs> point is, we cannot take any decision, but we do with the money at the moment. Because some say we save it, so we take a moment to pick a place. We are really a collective who discuss every little discussion about 20 euros. It's like we are spending a lot of money. So we, we have people who come by and give a lot of money and still give our, our donation for the eating and stuff. We think it's important, but it's, uh, we don't want to say we don't need money. But we, the time. funny thing is that the concept like this, with no fixed price, a placement has 
a really, and that's what in Italy really people shock, we don't have no money issues. Not at all. And that thing shows that the back kitchen, also if you're living in an alternative culture system, but in Italy it doesn't work, because for is different, she could have achieved it. Here, it's no problem. Surely, we sell beer. <laughs> it helped. Honestly. It, it, it helped. I wanted, wanted to stress this point because we know that many initiatives in other places and other countries have a very big yeah. money problem that they yeah. don't know how to that they don't know how to get finance, yeah. how to run this place and so on. I mean but, but in Vienna we found you but you're working entirely. We we're working entirely free. So we do, we do the voluntary work. Yeah, in other, in other places people also want to run, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, and again. But then probably also the Austrian economic situation might be better than the economic situation in other countries where people have to work much more to make a living and maybe mm -hmm. maybe this also has to do with that. Well, I must say we have been collected. We are 30 to 40 people. That means when we earn money, it's the moment when we have open. And um, so it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm somebody, I'm a working girl. I'm working 30 hours a week at least. So I have a year. I'm not earning money. Yeah. But um, when I'm here once a month, I give my back. You know? But it's not a big thing. And I think it's just important to say it can work something like that. Surely you have to be enough persons. Yeah. You know, for me, I, sometimes I'm two, two months, it's not possible for me to be active. Because I have to work or because I have other things going on in my life. 